Over 3,000 of the world's best Olympic sailors will travel around the globe from Melbourne, Australia to Miami, USA, Palma de Mallorca, Spain, Pierre, France, Medemblik, the Netherlands, Kiel, Germany, and Weymouth, England to determine the champions of the ISAF Sailing World Cup. U.S. Sailing's Rolex Miami OCR hosts the very best Olympic sailors in the world alongside sailors with disabilities in the equally competitive Paralympic program. Our Paralympic program is, is actually quite strong this quad. Going into regattas like Miami OCR and the other World Cup events, we think our, our performance uh, should be podium finishes. Uh, I've been involved with the Paralympic program for the last 10 years, and I've seen it evolve immensely. The program has become more and more structured along the lines of the Olympic program. We're focusing a lot on athlete development through coaching and uh, physical improvement of the sailors, and that's a big step forward from where we started 10 years ago when I got involved quite happy with everything that U.S. Sailing has done for us. In terms of abilities that you use in, in life in general, in terms of communication, teamwork and leadership. Well, this is Mauro. Um, he's a facility dog trained to work with groups of people with disabilities. After watching Nick Scandone, our, uh, our late gold medalist, on a dock with one of our sailor's pets, watching his stress levels go down was really significant. That's what led me to apply for Mauro to work with the team. And his primary job is for the mental support. He also does uh, some physical tasks. He picks things up. He carries things for athletes. He's there for their well-being. He knows their voices. He knows their boats. And he's definitely part of the team. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. We've reached the final day of qualifying here at the Rolex Miami OCR. 630 of the world's best sailors have been whittled down to only 10 after today, and they will move on into tomorrow's final medal round race. Who will win? We'll find out as we join the action on the water. We begin on the Paralympic race course with the 2.4 meters. Here's the gun. Definitely a few boats over to my eye, particularly down at the favorite pin end of this line, and we're off. As the fleet spreads out from the Netherlands, it's Terry Smitter with a four-point advantage. Oh, I'm not uh, even uh, first in the ranking. It would be really a match between uh, Europe and uh, Northern America today. The win is in reach, so I think I would have to be quite uh, conservative, but not too far away from that. At the top mark, a boat's approach from both the left and the right. Two Canadian teammates, Alan Leibel, just gets tacked on by his teammate, former medalist Paul Tingley. But in the lead from the Netherlands, it's Andre Redemaker. And here's division leader Terry Smitter deep in the pack in this race. The 2.4 meter is one of the closest in this regatta. As you can see, downwind, boats are overlapped 3 deep. At the Lured Gates, it is still Andre Rademacher from the Netherlands who's managed to hold off the charge from the rest of the fleet as he heads back upwind. Reminiscent of miniature 12 meters, the breeze increases for these 2.4 meters. Paul Tingley from Canada is a former Olympic medalist and it shows he has just overtaken the lead at the top mark. Andre Rademacher makes a late charge for the finish as both boats cross the line, but it's going to go to Canada's Alan Liebel. Congratulations. We move over to the semi-final division in the women's match racing where Great Britain's Lucy McGregor faces Claire Leroy from France here on the starting line. Coming up on one minute to go till the start, both teams traveled far away from the line. Now McGregor currently leads Leroy 2-0 and she leads her off the line. In the next semifinal matchup, it is current Olympic gold medalist in the laser radio class, Anna Tunnicliffe on starboard. She switched to women's match racing and will face Nicole Souter from Australia. Currently, Tunnicliffe leads Souter 2-0. I chose to switch to match racing because I was looking for something different. I love sailing the laser radial, but um, the match racing, short races, very tactical. But we're learning a lot. It's very good, uh, very good competition. And the goal for this week is hopefully to come out with a medal, but learn as much as we can as well. At the start, it's Tunnicliffe who nails the pin in. The first shift is a lefty, Souter on port as well, down here to the right. 
Souter tacks on to starboard. The first cross, Tunnicliffe Lee Bowles. It's a strong one. Look for Souter to tack away. A dial down for Souter. Tunnicliffe responds. She ducks and Souter takes an early lead. Souter at the top mark leads Tunnicliffe by about one length. Jibe set. Four boat lengths to the mark rounding. Anna Tunnicliffe is coming in strong from behind, surging outside of Souter. Souter jibes, trying to protect the inside overlap, but she's slow. Now it's going to be Tunnicliffe. Will she get an overlap in at the mark? No, but she is right on Souter's heels. Here comes the jibe. Penalty flags could be flying. Green flag and Souter maintains the lead. And we've got a tacking duel on our hands. In our first match, it's GBR's Lucy McGregor who sealed the deal over Claire Leroy. She'll move on into the finals, but who will she face? Tunnicliffe or Souter? Oh, nice move by Tunnicliffe. Souter goes for attack and she can't. Anna Tunnicliffe luffs up as a lured boat. That slows Souter down and Anna puts another onslaught at her. Luff after luff. The U.S. team is pulling forward. At the finish, it's Souter who is best at Tunnicliffe and will have at least one, if not two, more matches. We've moved to the Paralympic division. This is the last race to determine the gold medal. Most all the fleet continues to stay on starboard, including our current division leader, Alexander Wang Hansen. Back on the line, this time with the Scud 18 fleet. Currently, Scott Whitman and Julia Dorsett, who won this regatta and the entire Sailing World Cup last season, are leading again today by three points. One of the marks of a top team is the confidence to go against the grain. Whitman and Dorsett tack on the port, the only boat to head to the right. At the top mark in the sonars, Germany's Jens Croker takes the lead from the port tack ley line. In the back of the pack, but nonetheless competitive, two boats shoot up to make it around the mark, and it's clean. Downwind, the sonar fleet spreads out while the Scud 18s continue to pound their way to the top mark. Things are shaking up in the Scud 18 fleet. Scott Whitman and Julia Dorsett went into today four points in the lead, but this boat, Jennifer French and Jean-Paul Crenu, have taken the lead and have enough points to possibly take the gold. John Roberts, Brenda Hopkins from Canada rounded in second. Very close match behind them for the British team of Alexander Rickham and Niki Burrell. And just behind them is USA, Andrew Fisher and Maureen McKinnon Tucker, a former gold medalist. Up in the two fleets crisscross again. The sonar to the top mark, the Scud 18 to the bottom. It's the beginning of the final run in the sonar fleet and Norway's Alexander Wang Hansen is in the lead of both the race and the regatta. Congratulations, how does it feel to have won this regatta? It feels great. We came here uh, hoping for a medal and but won this is the best. The Sonars have rounded the final lap of their race and coming into the finish, it's the Norwegian team of Alexander Wang Hansen, Per Eugene Christensen and Marie Solberg. They've won the gold medal for Norway. Finally in the Scud 18s, it's Jennifer French and Jean-Paul Crano who take the race, but the gold medal belongs to Scott Whitman and Julia Dorsett. And so the gold medals have now been decided in the Paralympic divisions. Congratulations to Norway's Alexander Wang Hansen in the Sonar class, USA's Scott Whitman and Julia Dorsett in the Scud 18, and the Netherlands' Terry Smitter in the 2.4 meter. And tomorrow the gold medal will be decided between USA's Anna Tunnicliffe and GBR's Lucy McGregor. And the top 10 in all of the rest of the Olympic classes will move on to one final medal round as we conclude the Rolex Miami OCR. I'm Tucker Thompson. We'll see you tomorrow.